Yes, good afternoon. My name is Hutch from Clorox. Um, and we're going to talk about the Clorox T360 device today. It's an electrostatic sprayer. Um, I believe every school got one or a couple per school. Um, so uh, electrostatic sprayer, let me kind of introduce what electrostatic, electrostatic sprayers do. So what we do is when we turn this thing on, we impart a negative charge to the particulate coming out. So it's about 30 micron, very small particulate coming out. We charge it negatively. The reason why we charge it negatively is when we charge it negatively, the uh, molecules can't stack. So for an example, if I were to, this is my, uh, I'm, I'm trying to disinfect this area here and I'm spraying from the front. Once I saturate the front, since they can't stack, it literally moves around and attaches itself to the side, the back and the bottom of it. So when I, so for example, if I'm gonna disinfect that, that uh, desk, when I'm spraying it, not only am I gonna disinfect the top in the direction I'm spraying, I'll also disinfect the sides, the back, and all the other areas that someone can touch. Because we know, you know, kids touch everything, right? They literally touch everything. So when I'm disinfecting something, I wanna make sure that all the contact surfaces that I'm able to touch will be disinfected. With this device, I can do that in a very quick uh, measure. Um, I was talking about earlier, my wife's a school teacher. I did their school last November. They had a full flu outbreak. It's a K through 12 charter school. Um, Three, three kindergartens, two um, uh, first, second, third through sixth grade, a high school, gymnasium, they don't have a cafeteria, the library and the administrative department. And I did it myself in two and a half hours. Now all the doors were open, so I didn't have to unlock doors and stuff, but I did it myself two and a half hours. It took me about a gallon and a half with the product. Each gallon, so this, this is a training uh, solution, each gallon does 9,000 square foot of treated space. So I don't mean floor space, I mean physical treated space. So if you're in a desk, if you're, you're in a classroom, you have 20 desks in a classroom, um, the teacher's desk and some other things, you're probably talking about between 750 and 800 square feet max, and that's a big classroom. Um, the, the, the kindergarten classrooms typically, it was about maybe 400 square feet of treated space. So one gallon goes a long way. Um, when you're spraying with this machine, you wanna make sure that you're between five and seven feet away. Um, uh, so the, the contact time for this, and the reason why five and seven feet away, if you're puddling, you're too close. If you physically see puddle, puddling, you're too close. We can disinfect computer labs, computer keyboards, sensitive, sensitive electronic equipment. Uh, UN, uh, UNM Hospital actually does all the emergency department, all the exam rooms in the ER. So you can, you can disinfect all of those as long as you're seven, uh, five to seven feet away. Computers were seven feet away, um, but um, in everything other than that, between five and seven feet away. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And you'll see how far this thing sprays. I'm, I'm gonna just use water for the demonstration today. Um, so very fast, very effective. Um, for norovirus, COVID-19, MRSA, all those nasty things we're trying to disinfect, two minute kill time. That means it's gotta stay wet for two minutes. So we have a nice broad, um, uh, even spray. It'll stay wet for about four minutes in our environment, especially in a controlled humidity environment like this. It'll stay wet for about four minutes. It's gotta stay wet for two minutes. That's the EPA registered kill time. It has, it's on the end list for the COVID-19, so we can cover COVID-19, because um, the surrogate is rhinovirus. So we're in good shape with that, we're on the end list. Um, but if, if you're in the athletics department, who's in the high school? Who does high school? Okay, so mats, uh, mats for wrestling, mats and stuff. I know probably not gonna wrestle anytime soon, but um, if MRSA pops up every once in a while, we have a two minute MRSA claim as well. So you can do, hit the um, workout areas, gymnasium. If they have uh, free weights, you can hit all of those. Very fast way to hit those things, which, which are very hard to disinfect, by the way, right? Universals, that kind of stuff. So locker rooms, we can hit all that with this product here. We have a hard surface disinfecting claim, that's this here. We have a soft surface sanitizing claim. EPA will not give what's called, will not give a soft surface disinfecting claim. Soft surfaces are, uh, um, textiles, chairs, uh, carpeting, um, curtains, anything that's not a non-hard surface. So we have a, a soft surface sanitizing claim and a hard surface disinfecting claim. So we cover all of those things. So wrestling mats, which are you know, a soft surface, we can disinfect wrestling mats. Um, and then if you have an administrative area where you have chairs and stuff, we can, we can sanitize those. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, perfect. So once again, this is the device. 
So you, you've seen the box. How many people have put it, taken it apart and put it together? Has, has, you taken your, you put your head together? Pretty, pretty easy to put together, right? So you have that pyramid box, and the reason why we don't want people to stack on top of that box, we take it out of the box, we turn it sideways, and we'll take the uh, casters out. The neat thing, these are nice, big, oversized casters, so they really, if you have un uneven surfaces, it actually um, rolls really well on uneven surfaces and, and even through parking lots. And I have some folks that actually take it in their um, vehicle and go from building to building and through parking lots. So we're just going to attach the casters. So it's partially assembled. Um, so when you assembled the handle the cradle, did you put the hook up or the hook down? You know what I'm talking about? This hook here. Did it go up or down? Up, oh, perfect. Yep. So what we want to do is we want to raise this handle here. have to just tighten this thing up just a little bit more. All right, so we're pretty much ready to start disinfecting. You notice this is a standard cord. So the neat thing about this cord, how many people have large gymnasiums or areas they have to disinfect it where the power outlet is pretty far away? A couple folks? Okay, so um, grounding is very important to electrostatic. If you have a good ground, what happens is you'll get that good electrostatic effect. So you have to good, have a good ground. So make sure, obviously, we have, we have a three-prong plug, three-prong outlet. Um, we have a 50-foot cord. We can put up to 100 feet, but you don't want to use two cords. We want to keep that ground continuously. So what we want to do is, because we have a standard uh, pigtail here, we can go to Home Depot or Lowe's, or if you have a 100-foot cord, just going to use one continuous 100-foot cord rather than two 50-foot two, uh, cords, okay? So for this demo, we'll, we'll obviously use the cord that's, that's applied to it. And the toggle switch. To turn it on is right here. So we get the toggle switch turned on. And when you turn it on, you'll see the blue light go on. And then when you, when you turn it on, you'll see the other blue light go on. So two blue lights, we're good to go. We turn it on, we only have one blue light, we have a malfunction somewhere. Uh, Western Paper is your service center. So call it, contact Chelsea if you have a uh, uh, something wrong with the machine. This machine's been out for about 12 years now. I've only had one return, one, one malfunction and it was someone who put it in the back of the van and didn't tie it down. It actually, they broke the, uh, the pump housing here. So it's a very robust machine, so you shouldn't have any issues with it. The only maintenance required for this machine is what we call purging the machine. And we want to purge the machine uh, for a couple of reasons. If we're changing chemistry, we have, we have an orange label product, which is our general disinfectant. We have a blue label product, which is a food safe, FDA approved, no rinse sanitizer. So we can rinse uh, food contact surfaces, like your, your cafeteria, your kitchen, you know, food prep areas. We can, we can sanitize those. If you're changing from one product to another, we need to purge it. Or at the end of the week, if we're not going to use the thing for two days, we want to purge it. And what I mean by purging it is literally I'm just going to typically this, this little writing here, and the cap will be on when I'm using it. I'm just going to disconnect the cap and then run, run the machine until there's nothing coming out of it. So, so right now I see a little bit of product. This is a test product, this is water. If I have a little test product coming out, I want to make sure that there's no product, no product, and that means I've completely purged it. So what I'm trying to do is get all the product out of this pump. And because I don't want that pump, you know, I don't want a surfactus to sit in that pump and actually just kind of gum it up a little bit. I want that pump to run good. But to do that, I'm just going to go ahead and use this and, 
and make sure it's just like this. This is completely purged. Okay, so that's really the only maintenance required. Now, what you want to do is this cap, you lose this cap, the machine won't work. So what you want to, what you want to do is make sure whenever you purge it or whenever this, uh, whenever this cap, um, uh, whenever this thing's stored, it's actually stored on a bottle. Even if it's an empty bottle, keep it on this bottle. Because I've seen people transport it with a cap dangling, it gets caught on something, they lose it, it gets stuck someplace, and then obviously you can't use the machine. So always make sure the cap is, even after you're done purging it, just put it back on the bottle, um, even if it's an empty bottle. So make sure it's applied to the bottle. So that way we, we won't lose that cap. Any questions? Yes, sir. So if you needed to buy, say, a different length of extension, like an extra piece of doing car Chelsea, do you guys have extra service parts for those? Yes, in this cap here? Yeah, Chelsea can get caps. What about any other part of the machine? Like so yeah, so, so, so Chelsea can, will either service it, fix it, or BioPlanet, which is the manufacturer, Clorox owns a company called BioPlanet. They actually manufacture this machine in the States. So they'll, they may send somebody out. It all depends on what's wrong with the machine. In most cases, we send it back. They actually send you a box. If you don't have a box with a return label, it goes back. It has a one-year warranty. Within that one year, any issue goes back, usually back to BioPlanet. They'll repair it and send it back to you. Um, outside of that, you know, it still might be evacuated back, depending on what's wrong with the machine. Um, I've only had one other machine go back. Yeah, UMC El Paso, the, the uh, hospital had a problem. I think they ran a, some of the chemistry through this um, and it, it clogs and stuff. So, so it voids the warranty if it's not the Clorox product. So I can tell you. Um, so it voids the warranty if it's not the Clorox product. So we, it's, it's, we, we call it a closed loop system. So we make the product, we make the machine. Now let me explain what that means. Um, this, is, this product is EPA certified with those kill claims we talked about through this machine. So when you look at these other, there's other machines out there, by the way, and then some are less expensive, some are more expensive. Um, we're the only machine that I know of that actually, the manufacturer makes the machine and the product and it's EPA approved on the master label. So when you actually see the product, you'll see the 360 machine on the product, on the label of the product. And on the master label, it actually talks, the kill claims are aligned with this machine. Um, you can use the product outside of the machine with a spray bottle, we have efficacy, efficacy with that as well. But um, other machines, there's a victory sprayer out there. Those actually are not aligned with the product. So there's no EPA approval with that machine and that chemistry. So you guys bought actually the Cadillac of the product out there. We can rest assured when we're, when we're spraying, we're doing the work, we're spraying, we're gonna actually um, kill those bugs that we're trying to go after. Does that make sense? So no, it's a closed loop. There's three products, by the way. There's the orange label, which is your general disinfectant. That's what you're gonna get. There's the blue label, which is a Clorox, and I think I've got so this product here is, um, is a little bleach in this. Um, this product here is the FDA approved food service sanitizer, no rinse. So this is blue label. And then there's a kind of turquoise label that we sell to hospitals it's called Sport Defense. It's got a CDIP claim. It's a really nasty bug that hospitals have. So that's got a CDIP claim. So that's a Sport Defense. I don't know if you have that for as well. Oh, I know. Um, so there's three chemistries. 90% of your use is gonna be the orange label. That's got the MRSA, cor uh, corona, I mean, um, coronavirus, COVID-19, uh, norovirus, and all those other bugs. Okay, so it's the orange label, okay? And this is a classic example. If I had the orange label here, and I was going to the cafeteria, and I wanted to sanitize, I would purge it, and then put this bottle on, and then once, you know, once I don't see anything product going through the, the unit, I'd purge it, put this bottle on, and I can just uh, sanitize the food contact surfaces. Does that make sense? Okay, so like any other product, like any other disinfector sanitizer, we clean first, we, we, I call unclutter, we clean, then we sanitize and disinfect. So you still have that process. So it's gotta be, you know, no, no gross soil, uncluttered. The, the, in, I, I know my wife's a teacher. I know teachers like to keep a, stuff, a lot of stuff on their desk. You have to impress upon, if you wanna sanit disinfect their, their surface, they need to make sure that it's uncluttered, the stuff is off the desk, or, uh, you know, off of things in the classroom to be able to uh, sanitize or disinfect those surfaces, okay? Um, can we do computer keyboards? Yeah. Yes. yes, perfect. Um, when I'm doing it, when I, if there's, are there phones in the, in the teacher's rooms? I like to take the phone off the cradle, put it upside down, because I want to disinfect that surface that they put on the, so those are the things we're looking at. We're looking at exposing all those surfaces that we want to sanitize or disinfect. Um, very important for computer keyboards. For example, everything here we can sanitize, we can disinfect. 
Um, um, but the, the key is seven feet away, and you'll see that spray. Any questions so far? Yes, so, custodian is what, so a, a surface like this, do we wipe it down first and then disinfect? So, so a surface like that, I, I, I can tell you that protocol is going to say yes, we wipe it down, we do a cursory wipe, just make sure there's no dirt and stuff that's going to be that, beyond that surface, because yeah. we want a contact surface, so everything's going to be wiped down first and then we, we will disinfect. What that means is you don't, you can use a neutral cleaner, you can use just something that is you know, mild surfactant to wipe down the surface. It doesn't have to be anything very expensive or something with disinfecting claims in it because I'm going to disinfect the entire surface after this. So you can reduce your cost of some of the, your other chemicals that I'm um, disinfecting or uh, that I'm cleaning and use this to, to do all your disinfecting. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. So right now we use that alpha disinfectant. Which, which I mean, I, I, you, know, it, I'm, you know, you have to use a protocol that you're told to do, yeah, yeah. but reality is this is going to be much more effective than that is product. Definitely. Two minute kill time is very fast. This is a very good product. So you can use just a neutral cleaner, like a neutral floor cleaner, or a neutral cleaner to, di to, to, to clean, then, uh, then you can disinfect with this. So and that's what uh, you know, we're trying to avoid is the machine coming in and then they spraying it, not having to think that they have to wipe surfaces down still. So I don't want that misconception uh, no. to be in, you know, involved. You always have to clean before you disinfect. Okay. Every, every surface has got to be cleaned first before you disinfect. That's always the case, even with a machine like this. Okay. Yep. To include food contact surfaces, you've got to clean those first. Do you have, you have kindergartens? Do, you have, uh, uh, do they have toys they put in their mouth and stuff? Or, okay, so this pro the, the blue product, the neat thing about this blue product, if, uh, if they order it, is in those areas, you can use this. It's an, remember, it's an FDA-approved food contact sanitizer, no rinse. So their toys that they put in their mouth, you can actually sanitize with this. Once it dried, they can put it in their mouth. That's what this is made for. A lot of cancer centers that have kids go up to the cancer centers, they have those, they call it uh, giraffes, uh, play areas. They have a lot of soft toys. They'll use this to, to sanitize those, those um, toys. Once they dry, they can put it in their mouth. You can't use the orange label for that. You can use the blue label for that. Okay. How, how long do you have to wait for the thing to dry? Say again? How long do you have to wait? So, so in our environment, on the orange label, on a, hard, on a hard surface, it, it takes about five minutes four to five minutes. Once you have a soft surface, it's gonna take 10 minutes. So, because they absorb more and they retain more, it takes how long for them to dry out? It takes on average of 10 minutes in our environment. And we always do the touch test. You touch it before you allow the kids to play with it. But it takes about 10 minutes on the blue label. Now, on the orange label, there's no bleach. That orange label, your primary disinfectant, there's no bleach. That is a quat product. The blue label, there is a little bit of bleach so we're looking at you know soft surfaces. We have to just make sure they're, they're textiles, they're they're um, uh, poly, they're, you know polypropylene, polystyrene, that kind of stuff. Most commercial products are are, are poly; they're not cotton or wool. Okay, so we can we can sanitize all those soft surfaces. We can disinfect all the hard surfaces. Um, so we can pretty much hit everything in your school. Okay, any questions so far? So what's the contact time? Two minutes. Two minutes. Contact time is what the EPA says we have to keep it wet for. What's the dwell time? Four minutes. It stays wet for about four minutes if we do it right. Okay, so that means 100% of the time we're gonna disinfect those surfaces that we target. All right, cool. Any, any questions? Remember that there's no bleach in the orange product. That means if we have any other products, so for example, if we're using like alpha, we're using anything with ammonias, we're not concerned about we always want the, want the chemistry to be dry before we use another chemistry. That, that's a cardinal, that's cardinal rule. One chemistry is dry before we use another, another chemistry, but there's no bleach in this in the, in the orange disinfectant product, even though it says Clorox on it. All right, any questions so far? Okay, PPE. On the orange label product, and we and, and we we like to keep it stable throughout of it. The the uh, blue label, you're only required to use eye protection meaning glasses, you can use goggles if you want to, but just eye protection. Um, on the orange, you need N95 mask or respirator. I can tell you most people are using an, a respirator because you can assign one to a person, you can change the mask out, you have to filter that once a month. Um, N95 masks are hard to get and expensive sometimes. Okay, so a lot of people are going to respirators uh, with this, this machine. But so PPE, orange label, which is your general disinfectant, eye protection, and N95 mask or better. Did you have a question? For the respirator, is there a certain test we have to do for the... So that's going to be based on your local policy. 
I mean, that, that's going to be something that you, that, that's going to be based on the local policy. Um, most people, we, they don't, because an N95 mask, in, in, in healthcare it's fitted. We're not concerned about pathogens, we're just, we're just concerned about quad, okay? On the label, on the, uh, on the SDS label on here, you're not even required to use even gloves. So the, this is a very safe product. The orange label is a very safe product. The only reason why we want an N95 mask is we're putting it through electrostatic sprayer. Electrostatic sprayer is a very fine mist. Remember, it's, it's, it's charged negatively. It's looking for a positive. We just don't want you to breathe it in. That, that's it. So, so it's not like we're, we're not concerned about pathogens. We're, not concerned, we're just concerned about clot. Okay? Uh, once again, on the SDS sheet, if you were just pull it out, it would just say no PPE required. Once you put it through electrostatic, N95 mask, Safety glasses, regular glasses, and like goggles you want to. Okay, any questions on the PPE requirement? Okay, perfect. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull it down. We're just gonna go ahead and, and, once again, we just have water in this machine. So we use water just to uh, be able to train. I'm gonna use this as my, my example. The hardest thing for people to understand do you guys use backpack vacuum cleaners? You do? Cord management. It's kind of important, right? You know, managing that cord. That's the thing in a classroom, because you have a lot of chairs, a lot of tables and desks. Cord management. When I was doing my wife's school, I did, what, probably 32 classrooms, and each classroom had between 25 and 30 chair uh, desk combinations. Cord management, finding out where the receptacle is, being able to manage that cord, and just you know, walk through. Um, and because, like, if, you, if you're doing this right here, I would actually be spraying this set of desks as I was going on this side. I wouldn't be coming down here if it got too close. Okay, so cord management, kind of strategizing how you're gonna do that classroom. So, for example, remember this is hurt. So it takes about 18 to 20 seconds to get products through the machine. surfaces in this on this uh, table so as we talked about it remember the molecules can't stack so think of it like two magnets the same polar they repel right so once I saturate the surface it literally moves itself to the bottom the side it, it'll just it'll uh, attach itself to every surface in, the, in this on this um, chair desk combination to be able to, to disinfect everything so doing this room I can I can disinfect probably every surface in this room in less than 20 minutes and I mean every exposed surface that's going through all the walls, all the stack stuff, and you know, disinfect the um, uh, projector up there as well. Um, in a bathroom, I'm not taking the, the toilet paper out, I'm disinfecting it. W once it dries, you, you can use everything that's exposed. So once again, this room, 20 minutes. How long would it take to disinfect this room manually? Let's say bottle of milk. I mean, every surface. I mean, forget about it, right? We don't have time, we have people. With this, we can. So, the hardest thing for people to understand is cord management and then how close they are. Do not, you know, if you're going from a place to place and your cord is in the wrong position, just turn the machine off. I, I see people, they find that the cord like this and the machine is still running. Just, just turn the machine off and just, you know, uh, manage that cord and you know, get that cord where, where it needs to be. Um, just turn the machine off and I'll energize it again later on, okay? Very simple, very fast. And then purging, we talked about purging. And purging, all I'm gonna do is turn this thing on, uh, Disconnect the cap. Just go to run it. And I, as as I, I like to purge in a bathroom. I'll, I'll use a bathroom in the last, especially as like a two stall bathroom, because there's about enough product to do a two stall bathroom. I don't want to waste the product. But once again, I'm just going to purge it, use all the products, about 20 seconds worth of product. That's not a product you would just like that. And then that, now, I'm, now I, you'll have a little bit of it in the lines and pretty much I'm purged. Okay, so what are the two reasons why I was purging? 
still won't cause a we're not clogging yeah. this, or I'm going from one chemistry to the next chemistry, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so two reasons why I'm purging it. Now, if you're using it every day, don't purge it every day. If you're using it every day, but if you're gonna, if, if you're gonna, it's not gonna be used over the weekend, purge it over the weekend. Or if I'm transporting it, purge it when I'm transporting it from the field to the other, from a different location, okay? And that's T360 101. Pretty simple. Once again, I mean, when you get your machine, the hardest thing to get to start is cord management. You're not using a backpack. If you're using a backpack vacuum cleaner, you understand that with the cord. Um, it's cord management, making sure that you're not, that you're, 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 you're doing, you're, the flow is good through the, throughout the classroom. Um, do you have a, who does a library? Okay, you can do the entire library, including the books. Uh, Las Cruces, uh, they've had it for about two years now, in Las, the high school in Las Cruces. They do their entire computer lab, they do their entire library. I mean, those are things that can never get uh, books are considered a soft surface. We're sanitizing the books if we, if we need to. Um, if you have a COVID outbreak and someone who, they were in the library, expose as much as you can and, and, and sanitize. The key is seven feet away. Make sure you're seven feet away. That way we can get the keyboards, we can get all the phones, all those systems, and sanitize or disinfect all of it. Okay? Any, any other questions? So, on the pool where I am, the load detector is like really low. That machine will not do anything to make the smoke detector to go on? They will not. Okay. Obviously, don't direct them to the smoke detector, yeah. <laughs> but, but no, they will not. No, okay. no. And there's no heat in this, and, 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 and it's not going to consider it. It's, it's, it's not, you know, those are actually, the way they're sensors, they're not, it's just a smoke detector. But obviously, don't direct them to the smoke detector. Because yeah, we have a couple of times the teachers using the spray <coughs> in the bathroom, and all of a sudden, the alarm goes on. Because the smoke detectors are really low. Um, I'm good. I've never heard of that before. I have, I have some hospitals, some uh, Air Force uh, clinics and hospitals that use this. And they have really sensitive uh, alarm de detector systems, and we've not had it had it go off. So I'm going to say no. But once again, you could prove me wrong. I've never, never, I've never seen that before. Okay. Yeah. So. Uh, you know, so any advice on what we should be spraying the most, like point of contact? And so we always talk high contact surfaces. Okay. So I, I was just at Cibola, uh hospital that before I came here. And we talk about high contact surfaces. So things that people touch the most, obviously. So when I go out, I'm, I'm gonna make sure I disinfect, by the way, I'm gonna disinfect the sanitizer because people touch those no matter what, even though they're automatic or they might go to the manual. Um, door handles, light switches, I'm gonna, uh, key, uh, keyboard, key, uh, keyboards, um, handles. By the way, how many janitor's carts do we have in this school? Janitor's cart, janitor's cart. Uh, we got four. Four, yeah. okay. When's the last time you disinfected your janitor's cart? I don't personally use them, but probably never. But they go honestly. through. But they go through them. Through, so 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 I do a lot of hospitals. Do the, do the, they do the same thing? I mean, janitor's carts. Those that never get disinfected, disinfect the janitor's cart because people touch them. You you do touch them. Handles that kind of stuff. So, um, the, the, so high high contact surface, high touch surfaces. All those door handles. Um, yes. Restroom, the stalls. And you're going to do everything in that restroom. You're, you're going to because let's be honest, kids touch everything. So, do you have exposed underneath the sink in the in the elementary school? They touch all that stuff too. So now you'll be able to actually disinfect all those, you know, when you're disinfecting it. Once again, no much, no, not much time. It's just going to take you nothing but a couple, about a, you know, 30, 20, 30 seconds. So everything in the restroom is going to get disinfected. Yeah, they, like I said, they touch everything. So, um, PPE required. What's the PPE required again? I wear in Respirator or an anti mask or better. Correct. Yep, perfect. Okay. All right. Any other good questions, by the way? Yes, sir. Do you use the playgrounds outside? So I can tell you that the official Clorox is we're not supposed to use this outside, but I do know that the, there's schools up north that actually use a generator and do and do a playground. Obviously, you want to make sure that the, there's no wind, you know, and not the, because you, you want to make sure you hit the target the surface. So, um, who had? Who, do you have a transport? So anyone here from transportation? Best way to do buses, activity buses. This is the best way to disinfect because they're hard to disinfect. Nobody disinfects them. So all your vehicles, this is the best way to disinfect the vehicle. Soft surface sanitizer claim, hard surface disinfection claim. So transport, we can do, we can do all the buses and, and all the transport vehicles. So, uh, so outdoor, I'm, I'm gonna say, you know, our official stance is no outdoor. But I can tell you, uh, athletic equipment, 
um, football helmets. Who does those? How about uh, pads? Best way to do those. Uh, Fabens High School in El Paso, that's the first thing they bought it for, the athletic department bought one of these things to do all of those athletic, because they never get disinfected. So those are the things we can think about. We can disinfect those very fast because they don't get disinfected and they're hard to disinfect. Um, football pads, for, for example, guarantee they don't get disinfected. And they're, and they're hard to disinfect. Good questions. Yes, sir. What about <coughs> weight room? Absolutely. Yeah, Best way. So um, I was at UNM Athletics yesterday and they have a brand new, beautiful um, uh, you know, Johnson Gym. They have a brand new facility, Johnson Gym. And a whole brand, brand new, free, they have free weights, they have universals, and that's what, they, that's what they bought. They bought a couple of them. One was just for that uh, workout facility. So free weights, workout, universals, yes, all that stuff. Very easy to do. Now, once again, exposed surfaces. So the surface has to be exposed to be able to do it. So on the free weights, you're going to do everything but half an inch that's actually on the ground, or depending on how you have the, the free weight set up. Good question. What else, anything else? I have a question that it's kind of a... There's no bad question. No, I know, it's a, I don't think it's a bad question. We were talking about the solution earlier. Uh, we haven't received it yet. So I know we were talking to Mark when he said that new orders won't be placed until January. If we run out of disinfectant, this thing is ongoing, say, in the end of October, early November, we're out of luck on these machines. As far as work so you can't, place new, you can't place any new orders till January? Is that, is that what's still going on, Marco? Or is well, from our understanding, is Clorox is actually stopping manufacturing on the product itself. So I, I'm from Clorox. <laughs> that, that is absolutely not the truth. Okay. So we made, we made about 50,000 cases last month. We'll make about 100,000 cases next month. So uh, we are not discontinuing. So on the, on the, on the product that you have, um, we'll make 100,000 cases next month. Okay. So we make, we make the machine, we make the product. So I'm not sure where you got that from, but that's not the case. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, we, 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 we have, um, so I think this year we'll deliver Probably 62,000 machines. I mean, that's a lot of machines. And we had to support those machines. And we, we made it, we'll support them. So, okay. so now we're, we're making a lot of machines. Um, uh, uh, there's a car company that bought 1,000 machines. And they, what they're using it for is to disinfect inside the cars when they get returned. So, I mean, the, the, um, I think Delta, either Delta or America, I think Delta Airlines bought these to do the inside the, the aircraft. So, you know, we have a huge following. So we're not, you okay. know, wherever we got that from, that's not correct. We are manufacturing both product and machines. Okay. Thank you. All right. Yeah, I, I wasn't sure if it was that you couldn't order it or, but no, we're not, we're not just, we're not to just good idea. So too big, of a, too big of a product for us. Um, anything else? Any other questions? Beautiful. All right. No other questions. Um, you, you all have your machines. You put them together. It's simple to put, put, put together. Um, uh, uh, Roxanne has my, my contact information. Chelsea's also the contact, so you call her or call myself, um, and then we'll get your, in your answer, in your questions. Should question you distribute answer. the contact number to all the custodians, or maybe the ex-custodians? I will give you. I will give you my card before we do, get done here, so you all have my, my contact information. Okay. okay? So any questions? You can email me. Any questions? I live in Albuquerque, not too far away. So. Yep. And when we buy one machine, we get two free. <laughs> <laughs> so the good news is I make them, I don't sell them. That's a Chelsea question. So ask, ask Chelsea that question. So, yeah. yeah. Good question though, yeah. You're in purchasing, aren't you? I can tell. Yeah. Yeah. I can tell. All right. All right, perfect. And I'm done here. Is there any, any questions here? All right, perfect. Um, just as a side note, when you when you take your caps off, I always put a cap right here. So just in case you're transporting and you have to take this thing off, um, just have a cap available. So I always keep, keep one cap here, just to make sure I've got a cap, just because once you, once you put it on, you throw this away, um, you'll need one eventually when you uh, dismount this, uh, this bottle for some reason. Right. Whose machine is this? Whose, whose physical machine is this? Do not lose this cap, so find a bottle as soon as you can. And I am going to, who, who's the head custodian here? Is that you? Head custodian? Okay, I'm gonna give you a present. Because it's go it's gonna happen. Here's a cap. Here's a spare cap. Every machine has a cap, 
Chelsea can get you more caps, but if you don't have a cap, you can't use the machine. So I'm, I'm going to give you one spare cap. You remember to, to, to attach that cap to the bottle. You're not going to lose it, but we'll have one spare cap. So at this point, contact us for a cap. Okay? So is it like a groin, like a price for those, or is it? I should, she'll get it for free. I mean, that, okay. so what I, I, I can tell you that uh, what is it? Uh, one of the, I think the Las Vegas schools just said, hey, or, I think she can order five. Um, and, and it goes to what we call IMP, which is Clor Clorox's fulfillment location. So you can do uh, up to five. So just email Chelsea for five things. And she'll understand. She knows she, she'll know what you got from me, but she, uh, this is your free show. Okay. Okay. All right. Any, any, that's it? No questions?